My name is Tony Gasparis. I'm a vascular surgeon at Stony Brook Medical Center. And I've uh, basically dedicated my practice in the treatment and management of patients with venous disease. Um, so I've been using the chameleon balloon probably for the last uh, six to eight months. And having a dedicated practice in venous disease, I've applied it onto the venous system, although it's a dedicated balloon mostly for arterial arteri venous access right now. Um, the technology is very interesting to me in the fact that it has a dedicated infusion port proximal to the balloon where it's been used for injection of medications or uh, contrast dye. And, you know, seeing the technology, I felt that there may be an application in other areas other than AV access. The, on the venous side, uh, with uh, post-narbotic obstruction, uh, being a significant cause of chronic venous insufficiency. Uh, there's some physicians, uh, interventional radiologists and vascular surgeons that have been using balloon angioplasty in combination uh, with thrombolysis to take care of those obstructions. Um, when you have venous obstruction in the iliac system, it's pretty straightforward right now. We're using iliac stents. Uh, for post-thrombotic obstruction in the femoral popliteal segment, stents don't do very well. and what uh, people are doing is, as I mentioned, is balloon angioplasty with thrombolysis. There's actually um, about uh, six months ago uh, presented at the uh, vascular medicine meeting uh, results of the AXIS PTS trial where uh, Dr. Mark Garcia presented his experience of a uh, study where they looked at uh, management of uh, chronic venous obstruction with uh, balloon angioplasty and ECOS thrombolysis and they showed a significant reduction in Villalta scores, which is a measurement of post-thrombotic uh, disease uh, of about 35% reduction. And uh, with this, I uh, extrapolated to try to do it with using the chameleon with the idea that most of my practice is office-based. So whereas with uh, the Axis PTS trial, you're ballooning and thrombolysing, the patient stays overnight, um, how can we move that into the office-based setting? And with having an infusion port allows you to, while you're ballooning, potentially, the idea that I had was to lyse at the same time to prevent thrombus. Because with Axis PTS, the thrombolytics doesn't really help with taking care of your chronic scar tissue. What it does, it potentially lyses thrombus that are, develops when you're ballooning. Uh, so in order uh, to do that, what I was thinking is with, well, while we're doing our balloon angioplasty, uh, prep the vessel with TPA and uh, prevent any thrombus acutely forming. The, uh, the chameleon balloon is a relatively um, high pressure balloon, uh, but uh, works very well on curves and it's pretty semi-compliant. Uh, so in areas where you have in the uh, iliac veins and the uh, upper extremity veins, the brachiocephalic and, and subclavian, where there's curves, it, it tends to work pretty well because of the uh, fact that it's not super high pressure. The technology of the injection port, I think, is very uh, critical, mostly to combine this as a uh, intervention slash diagnostic catheter, uh, where I can see this being evolved with any type of uh, interventional device, whether it's a stent delivery system, a balloon, an atherectomy device, where as you're doing your intervention, you can uh, do a diagnostic angiogram right afterwards to evaluate the success of the intervention. Having the technology of a diagnostic port or injection port on the device itself will allow you to evaluate results uh, in, in, in a way that you reduce your radiation exposure, you reduce your contrast that you deliver, as well as uh, reduce the time it takes uh, multiple steps to get to the same result.